So here we are again. Hi there. Happy Thursday. Nice to see you, Barry. Nice to see you too, Christine. Let's do this, shall we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the new streaming network.com. WGSNDB Going Solo Network Radio TV and Podcast Number One Internet Singles Talk Network. And this is Let's Talk Dating with Barry, Christine, and Gigi is making her <laughs> video appearance that she always does when she hears Barry's voice. Because and right away, this is very early for her. <laughs> I know she was way in the other room, and she must have heard your voice. Amazing. So obviously, Cece or Gigi's up on the topic today because she knows how to flirt indeed she does it seems to be innate for cats i think they could learn from them in some ways <laughs> i think so i think cats i think cats are very good about being just the right amount of aloof and come hither and i've certainly noticed that about my cats yeah <laughs> so today we're talking about learning how to flirt which is there we are. fun for men and women because Men tell me they have no idea when women are flirting with them, and women tell me they have no idea how to flirt. So, geez, it seems to be a really good topic, don't you think? It does seem like it's a missing piece of education, so nothing you're taught in school, because that would be a dangerous place to do it, I think. <laughs> with all those hormones raging? Oh, my gosh, yes, I think that would be pretty incredible. Yeah. And, geez, I think it's such a fun thing to do personally. I like doing it. And it's such a nice way to gently, softly communicate with somebody, whether they're across the room or sitting next to you. I mean, there's so many subtle, lovely, gentle, easy, graceful ways to flirt, I think. The key word there being subtle, because there are sometimes, this is an interest, there's a couple of, there's a duality here for me. This is the thing I want to speak to quite right, right at the beginning, is that, and we talked about this before in other shows, how women are much more subtle in the communication than men are, generally speaking. So women can be indicating something and the man's oblivious to it because we need more blatant communication to understand things. At the same time, or I should say <laughs> counterpoint, there are ways that flirting can be done that is so past the point of being proper <laughs> that you might want to avoid doing that. So it's finding that medium in between too subtle and too blatant sort of thing. Boy, the balance we always were talking about between men and women and how they're communicating or not. Indeed. So I thought I could put you on the spot and Ooh. have you start today because I think <laughs> women are going to be very curious from a man's point of view. And I know that you generally are a more enlightened, more learned person because yes. you've taken so many classes and you talk about this with women all the time. And also you have lots of male friends that are in relationships or dating. So if you could talk a little bit about the spectrum of how a man, just to start out this direction, how a man would like, perceive being flirted with, what would he like women to do? What would get his attention? I'm sure a lot of women would be happy to hear about that. <laughs> Boy, you put a lot, of, a lot on my plate. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll take You're it. up to it though. Well, let me start from this angle first, which is, the way that we are wired as men, generally speaking, and, and as an Armstrong backs this up, is that we're always like focusing on target target acquisition for want of a better term. It's like we're always on radar mm -hmm. alert. So we're scanning. That's kind of the way we operate. So the way that a woman can flirt more effectively is to basically get her attention so that we mm -hmm. don't keep scanning. We stay present with her. So there are ways that women can do that that work really well and also sometimes there are ways that are almost too much so again this this spectrum thing is being the medium so i'd say one of the ways that a woman can get a man to stay focused on her is to basically engage with him so playing hard to get only works if he's already engaged it seems like you know that the, the challenge is that because we're scanning all the time if a woman's playing hard to get she's being coy he may not even notice her mm -hmm. unless she's very much his type and there's nobody else in the room that looks like her or whatever that is but in some ways, the flirtatious piece, and add another layer to this, because there's this, this thing about how men take the lead, which is definitely what we're meant to do. And again, counterpoint <laughs> is that it's it's often easier, and I don't want to don't want to push off the responsibility, but it's easier for a man to to actually be proactive when he knows that she's interested. So 
sometimes a blatant gesture, like again, we talked about this before in previous videos and podcast episodes about in the old days, women would drop a handkerchief, which would be a first flirtatious move to let the guy know she's interested. And in modern times, we had we we ideally would have an equivalent of that because women don't walk around with handkerchiefs in their sleeves to drop in front of a man anymore, at least very, very rarely. So to summarize, really, it's 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 a wonderful thing for a man, for a woman to let him know that she's interested because we as men have sent many, many times being rejected. And so um, the opportunity to be engaged, the opportunity to be received, the opportunity to be invited for a man is a wonderful gift that one can give him. So by some sort of demonstration, touching his arm, saying hi, showing interest, you know, flashing eyelids, flying eyelashes, eyelashes at him sort of thing. Those things are all things you can start the conversation with. So mm -hmm. I think that's a good starting point. I think that's really helpful. And I love that you talk about how you're busy scanning. You're <laughs> always scanning the perimeter in the world. When you're out and about, you're scanning the perimeter. And when you're in a place where there's ladies, you're scanning the perimeter. Yeah, and absolutely. I like that you point out because men can't often do have a type there's a type and so you will have a tendency to kind of notice your type more effortlessly while you're scanning just right. because if you were you know looking for a specific kind of car or a specific kind of electronic you would scan and then you'd hone in because that's the thing you're looking for and somewhere right. in your brain you have a type so you'll notice her and if you're not his type, he'll still notice you if you do something to be noticed. And I love that you point that out. So <laughs> smiling is a big deal to guys because what's really fun about guys, I'm going to tell you the secret, is if you <laughs> smile at them, they take credit. They go, oh, there, there must be something about Amy that she's smiling about. Mm -hmm. Did I say something funny? Does she like what I'm wearing? You know, why would she smile? That's so cool. And we really do get your attention if we smile at you. Right. And I think women often in the world, we're very busy with the five to 12 things that are going on in our brain that we, conversations we're redoing in our heads and what yeah. we're on a mission to do now and the next five things we're going to be doing that we are not conscious of how serious our face can look. And because I'm a woman, I can say the resting bitch face because it really does look that way. I'm a pretty smiley person and I smile a lot. If mm -hmm. I'm really concentrating, I've had more than one person go, are you mad? Because I go, because I'm thinking and I can right. look mad because my mouth just naturally kind of goes down when I'm not putting it up. So I've had to be conscious of that when I'm out in the world that I need to concentrate just for me to feel lighter and happier. And then if I see somebody that looks kind of interesting to smile at them, because generally the response is pretty quick. Now, if you are, guys are concentrating on something that you're working on, it's you're puzzling on it, you're finishing something, which is why you can't talk to them in the middle of a game at a really important part of the game. <laughs> Indeed. And if none of that is happening, if he's just, like he's doing the nothing thing in his brain that we don't understand, but you guys do really well. Yes. You can absolutely get his attention with a smile. So that's what you can do from across the room when he's doing that scanny thing. Oh my God. And then you might actually wave a smile and a wave. He'll go, wow, that's as good <laughs> as a handkerchief. Because what yep. you now said, ladies, is I would talk to you if you, if you make that walk across the room because we like you to make the effort and mm -hmm. you want to know that you have a really good chance of success that will at least talk to you right because coming up on us in a group of women boy it's a crap shoot you know whether or not we want to talk to you or our friends think we should talk to you it's really a gauntlet so if we've now given you some attention one-on-one -on -one, you know a few feet away you're pretty secure in coming over and at least saying hello right so consider that a flirt that's a great <laughs> flirt and boy to get women to do it they're like oh 
But then they tell me, oh my gosh, it works. I go, oh, I know. You guys are so receptive to that. Absolutely. That's yeah. funny the way you say that because it is the thing that it, we talk, I mean, we, again, previous episodes, we covered all this stuff. So if you haven't watched or listened to our previous shows, definitely go back and do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way men and women think differently, the way women, we focus differently, all those things are part of this conversation because flirting is a conscious effort. And it does take two to tango because if one person's flirting and the other one's not on that wavelength, there's just no communication, you're just missing each other. So to have a methodology and a perspective on how to be noticed and get the person's attention in a way that is invitational, but also subtle enough that it doesn't feel like you've been smacking them in the face with it is a smart place to start. And so for flirting, it has to start with how do you initiate communication? And oftentimes you can't like yell across the room in front of 300 people and go, excuse me, I think you're cute. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> or you can. No, it not necessarily, it doesn't always work very well and sometimes it doesn't land very well. So other ways of doing it. And yes, over a distance, doing something that's non-verbal is better because it's easy to see something happening across the room that is to yell across and hopefully be heard. So yeah, it can start. Yeah, I think that that's a, a really helpful thing. For, so now we've given tips to both men and women that a, a woman, if you see somebody interesting, smile at them wave if you see a woman smiling and waving get your little self over there because <laughs> she's interested in talking to you yeah. and even if she's not your type other women will see you being polite other women will see you being cordial other women will see you smiling same for the woman all the other men that see you smiling will go wow she's a happy person wow i wonder if she'll smile at me i mean that is such an a door opening for both sides right the other thing that can be so that was the most direct the others are not always a sure thing we're going to talk about it anyway yes so one of the things that will get a man's attention is to ask his opinion about something or to ask mm -hmm. his advice about something yeah. now you could ask the guy at Home Depot or the guy at the gas station and you're not really flirting with him. You know, you're not interested in going out with him. What I'm telling women to do is to do it to practice. Yeah. Ask women, men for their opinion. Ask them for advice so that you get more comfortable with it. Because when it's a guy you're interested in, that's a really good way to flirt. Because the guys that you're not interested will think it's cool that you're doing it. And the guy that you're interested will think it's cool that you're doing it. And then you can proceed to do more, ask more questions, ask more advice. But it's a very good way to have that single focusedness of the, the man be single focused on you because you've given him a task, you've given him a mission, and he wants to please you and see you smile because you're going to be happy that he gave you advice and help. What do you think about that, Mr. Selby? I think it's a great idea. It's, it's also something that and this is the challenge <laughs> is that because sometimes we are oblivious is that when a woman asks us me for feedback or for counsel or for some idea we just go you know we're giving advice we, we're like we walk away going i did the right thing without realizing she wanted actually more than that that was just a way to get in so it is important to both to be present and aware of what's happening at the same time it's happening because that's a big place of it too um the other piece i want to say too because again something we'll talk about before is it's interesting for women when if you do like smile at the guy and gets attention it's not always instantaneous that he will respond to that because he's been so like defaulting into the radar sweep like looking back and forward it may take him three or four passes before he realizes oh hang on a second something's happening here because we're again we're not when let's be transparent we're not the sharpest tool in the box sometimes <laughs> in this level at the same time i love this counterpoint thing like this and then that is that one thing that we can do as well as men is that we're going to be careful when we're looking at women because we can be scanning women. And the challenge is because we are very oftentimes base driven, when women see us looking at them, they think we're looking at them sexually without looking at them in the other way because that's almost innate the way men look at women. It's kind of unfortunately one of the side effects. And for some women, especially if they've been through challenging experiences with men in the past, may not see men clearly either. So there's, it's like, how do we navigate beyond that to actually connect and talk without the assumptive level of, Oh, you want that? Not going to give that. Not going to work, sort of thing. You know, that's one piece we want to talk about. Because is because lots of women think that's all men want. Right. And if they can't have that, they don't want anything else. And it's not 
all. It's certainly an integral part. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'll just keep saying to women is they can ask and you can say no thank you or you can say not right now, maybe later. Most of the time in the world, you have 100% control. Most of the time, really. Yeah, there's times horrible, awful things happen. That's not this point. This point is if someone comes on too strong or says something that makes you uncomfortable, you say no. And the other really cool thing is if that happens, if there's another man nearby, ask for his help. Mm -hmm. Because a man telling a man back off works really well. Yeah, really well. <laughs> Use them for that. And then right. you might like the guy that came to your rescue. I've certainly had that happen a couple of times in my <laughs> long life. So know that if he approaches you, generally, he's at least likes how you look. Mm -hmm. Just the first step. We have to like how we feel. We have to like your energy. We like how your energy fills with our energy just to be in the same space as you. You have to like how we look and then you're happy to be in our space and then you'll see how you feel about us. So to see, to navigate that getting in the same space place, it's really helpful on both sides to ask for advice, mm -hmm. ask for help. I'm talk, always talking about the lettuce counter or the tomatoes or the grocery store to ask person that's picking out something that is interesting. Like, what do you do with that? And do you have a recipe? And what, there was a guy the other day and he was buying something and he was, I said something about it and he goes, yeah, I'm getting this for my wife because she's making something because she's lactose intolerant. And I said, did you know in the meat counter, they have two cheeses that are lactose free? And he's like, no, I go, go. He says, I should tell my wife. I said, no, you should go buy it. He goes, I should buy it. I said, you will be a hero when you show up home. And we were just having the married ring. I'm not in, but it was just such a fun conversation. And mm -hmm. it's one of the many reasons I'm so comfortable doing this and so good at this is because I practice it all the time. So to look for opportunities to ask the opposite sex for their help, for their advice out in the world. Because if you keep, if they're there and they're available and they stand there, cause, oh, wow, you are interesting. If we stay put, we're probably feel safe and have time. We're not rushing off and we're interested. So mm -hmm. pay attention that we're staying there, both sides. If, if he stays, he's interested. If she stays, she's interested. Now, it is a challenge to get both people that are both interested at the same time. But watch for that. Because that's right. another thing that men, as you said, you don't notice that. It takes a few. So if we are persistent and, well, tell me more about that. And, and what did you do about that? And, and how did you learn that? Because we're interested. We, we want right. to keep talking to you. We found you safe and maybe a little fascinating. And you're maybe our type. So for men, I want to say, if we stay put, stay put. <laughs> I like that. And the, rep the repeated um, nudge, or um, no, that's not what we put it, the, the repeated the reinforcement, well, the reinforcement of attention is a good thing because, as, as you said, and as I said earlier as well, we aren't necessarily the sharpest tool in the box. So... Oftentimes, we don't get the hint the first time. And again, the challenge is that women's communication is more subtle than men's. We took this in an episode last year sometime about how when women talk to each other, they can communicate a whole litany, a whole story. We're just raising one eyebrow. Yeah. Whereas for us men, we sort of need to lay it out in you know, nuts and bolts. And because we are very technical oftentimes, we tend to break these down to lots of little details. So our communication styles are different. So if a woman is interested in a man to let him know she's interested, it's almost like he needs to be reinforced with that a couple of times so that he goes, oh, hang a second, I'm on the right page now. And it's what, because that's the other part is that, and, and I said earlier, you know, because we're radar scanning, we may be with, with a woman who's interested, but it's almost like we need to get reinforcement from her to go, oh, I just need to stay here. This is where I'm supposed to be versus let me keep scanning over there because that's the other tendency is that, and that's an issue I know we've had. And just to another layer of complexity to this is that some of that radar scanning is with our phones. And the challenge is if you're out with somebody, you meet somebody, is especially if you see someone across a bar and you wave and something else happens, 
is those phones should not be out anywhere in visible sight unless it's to exchange information. Because when you're communicating with somebody on a, when you're flirting, flirting is done ideally with eye contact, which is hard to do when the phone's in the way. <laughs> so put the phones away, turn them off, whatever, put them in the pocket. Don't, don't keep getting distracted by them. Stay present with each other because if you want to flirt with somebody, your physical presence is what's needed, not, and that includes your eye contact and your emotional presence, not you're just standing there by looking at your phone instead. I will tell you, I've noticed when a man put his phone away, mm -hmm. it meant something to me that if we started talking and he picked up his phone and he put it in his pocket, I was like, Whoa, nice mm -hmm. move, nice <laughs> move. Don't just turn it over, put it away. It's a right. very, it's a very, we like it. If we notice it, we like it. Well, it's showing priority in a sense. We feel important. Doesn't yeah. everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the other way that we flirt is we touch you. Mm -hmm. If we're feeling safe and comfortable, which can take you know, a different amount of time for each woman. And we, oh, what a good point. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, I'm going to pick something off of you. Don't look because there's probably nothing there, but we're going to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. The invisible. The woman told me the other day, she goes, there was a thing on his lapel, but I didn't like him. So I was not going to do it. <laughs> that's the other way. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was very honest. If you, if we, please notice if we do that. Mm -hmm. It's still not 100%. I wish there was completely 100%. This is not 100%, but it's pretty high percentage that if we're going to touch you, it's generally we probably are flirty. We probably are. Because why would we touch you if we weren't wanting to flirt with you? Right. Really? What would be the point? And that's another thing, for example, if, if you're going out somewhere you're walking out from the place you went you know and if you're a smart man you'll offer to escort the woman to her car afterwards you know whatever that is to add up being gentlemanly conduct but there's something about if you turn and she puts her arm through his that's like i mean for me as a man i mean i'm sure all men but i'm sure most men feel this way just it's like our heart starts pumping faster we our, our chest swells we feel prideful we feel almost like you know i'm i'm honored to escort this woman this lady myself and so it can be really powerful, just that sort of touch as well. So it's little things. So much we trust you if we put yeah. our arm through your arm. Yeah. So that, and, and I just want to say it, it is received as well, because that's the biggest part. Another way that's a pretty self, un, it's pretty unconscious. There's women who do it on purpose. Most of the time we don't do it on purpose. We mess with our hair. Mm -hmm. If we're feeling attracted to you and we're liking you and we're enjoying what you're saying and we're <laughs> leaning in, oh, it's even when with the shortest hair, you know, they'll curl it and just watch for that. It's so pretty high on the I'm flirting with you scale. Right. And the thing, again, as you said, it's not guaranteed, but it's a dent. It's a very good indication of something positive. So mm -hmm. keep doing what you're doing, basically. If, if she's doing that to you as a man, like that's a good sign. Stay on track. <laughs> Do more. Whatever, yeah. you, whatever you're doing when we're touching you or messing with our hair or leaning in, keep doing that thing. Whether yeah. you were talking about a story or you were asking us something, I have to tell you that that's the... You know, I have to bring up sex at least one time every time. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing about women. If we're making a lot of noises and, and it looks like we're start, keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop. Don't change. Don't do anything different unless we tell you. Stay there. So I'm going to back back up to furthering. If we're leaning in, if we're playing with our hair, if we're smiling, if we're engaging, keep doing what you're doing. Because what men want to do is go, what else should I be doing? Don't think that. Right. <laughs> you can keep it up till then until we finally hit on the thing that we're now feeling and get just keep doing what you're doing. Keep thinking yeah. of more questions to ask or more things to tell us about that. Because our bodies react by moving towards you when we want more. Mm -hmm. That's how we act as women. So 
that's a really good thing to pay attention to instead of what's the next brilliant thing should I be saying? I mean, right. that's a lot of pressure in the beginning, for sure, about not putting your foot in your mouth, of course. But once we're there, pay attention to what we're enjoying and don't change. <laughs> it's a really good <laughs> advice all over for men. Absolutely. And and again, this is the thing that there's so many layers to this. And, and what we're speaking about is not like these are the fixed rules, but these are just indications and good tools to use as resources when you're looking at how to explore this new world, especially if you've come out of a long-term relationship and you're suddenly back in the dating scene for the first time in forever and you're not sure how to act or what to do. These are clues. These are these are keys you keep close to your heart that will be helped to help you navigate that journey. Mm -hmm. And the thing I want to say is, and um, we talked about this in before about, um, you, you showed this thing, it's going back a couple of months ago, when a woman feels a bit concerned about this guy maybe hitting her and she was not money interest about how she can use the, the bar people can help her with the, you know, just order a certain drink, get some safety, get some out of the way. This conversation we're talking about is is really about when two um, consenting adults are interested in each other and want to do and have the dance of connecting with each other and starting things off. Now, the thing I want to add to this as well with flirting is flirting is not just something you do the first time you meet. Because I want to talk about this as, a, as an add-on piece because, yeah. and again, I, I'm see, keep thinking we're talking about this in a recent episode about when you get into a long-term relationship, how the, the juice can sort of feel like it fades away. Flirting is one of those things that if you keep it going during the relationship, it will last a longer term and it will be more fun and playful and sexy and, and, and lighthearted if you keep the flirting going. So it's almost like ha is, is you want to start how you want to continue sort of thing or you want to continue how you start. It's like keep the same thing going because flirting is not the thing you do just to get their attention. Yes, it is the first step oftentimes to get to know somebody or when you've made a friendship, friendship with somebody because the other another piece again is and it's kind of a conversation with a client recently about making friends first is that flirting doesn't always happen as the first thing you do when you meet somebody, you can actually be friends with somebody you've built friendship, built some level of a base of connection that you trust each other on. And then flirting happens on top of that. So flirting as a mechanism for connection is not just the first time you meet. It can happen after you've already built some sort of rapport and friendship. It can happen after you've been together for 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's something you can use anywhere along the journey. So this, this conversation is not just for the, first date experience keeping flirting fresh boy that's a very good important thing because it it flirting it just gets your juices going i mean when people finally get oh i'm flirting or oh somebody's flirting with me everybody gets a twitter there's <laughs> there's just nothing about this chemical reaction that doesn't happen for everybody when they finally get it yeah. so why not keep doing it? Because it feels really good. And finding Absolutely. the way that your partner likes feeling flirted with. You know, do they like a compliment? Do they like a pat on the butt? Do they like you sending them a sexy text? Do they like you sending them a card, leaving them a little note? I used to leave notes under the pillow for Tony. And he just liked that. He thought that he never knew what that guy was going to be saying on my little note under the pillow. And we were glad other people weren't looking. But it was a fun thing to do. And so to figure out what thing that they like, and then they figure out the thing you like to keep flirting. I'm so glad you said that because it isn't about just the beginning. And in the beginning, what you're doing is you're learning what is the way that you like to flirt with somebody and you like being flirted with back. Right. And for, I mean, it's the thing, because at the beginning, you definitely are in the unknown. It is like, you know, no man's land. So you're basically just flirting and seeing what lands or doesn't land. But once you've got established friendship, right, if you've established relationship, the flirts become more, um, fam not familiar is the wrong word, but they become more more clear. And you know, it's like the more on target more easily, which is a good thing. So, yes, the flirtatious stuff you do at the beginning may be hit and miss. And it's OK if you do it wrong occasionally. It's like you almost can. In fact, the good thing is if you flirt, badly in, in quotes and you mess things up you can always make a joke of that and become make that flirtatious so there's ways of doing this if you do it from a place of lightheartedness and playfulness and interest versus i've got to be serious and get it right if you make it easy and light even do it badly it can work so really? just be and be willing to step in laughing at yourself for sure yeah <laughs> yeah so you know some of the things that just a cold you know, right away, what you could say to somebody is like, what was the most fun thing you did so far this year? 
what was a really fun thing you did? I mean, what a great way to start a conversation and that you would share something that you've done is fun. Or gosh, what was something that was really challenging that you got through or you're still working on? You know, what do you, is there something that, because I like that people are open to thinking about the questions that I ask and I have to be willing to answer the same question, but that's the kind of, and people go, well, I like going deep. Well, you can go deep, but then this is the first conversation. So right. there's a way to go deep without feeling intrusive mm -hmm. or like you're going to have to reveal too much because you're asking them some really nosy ass question. Then you're going to have to answer the same nosy ass question. And I'm not doing that right away, but you can really learn so much about somebody. If you ask them those kinds of questions, Yeah, you know, who's the person that you had the best conversation with this year? Cause then you like, you know, did they talk to the same people? Was it that work or did they meet somebody new and how was that? I mean, I've gotten such a variety of answers when I've met somebody just brand new and I'll ask and they're like, gosh, what an interesting question. And I am thrilled when somebody asks me a question, I have to actually think about the answer because it's not the same one I've been asked the last 10 times, which is easy because I can just answer them. But I really like when somebody puts some thought. That also feels makes us feel important when somebody seems to have put some thought. And that, that feels kind of flirty to me if somebody's thought about a question to ask me and they're really interested in the answer how does that not feel flirty right well that's the thing be showing interest is a form of flirting it is and it's something where when you feel like someone's interested interest in you you are feeling valued you're feeling noticed you're feeling seen which is such a great gift and frankly if you've been flirted with that's what you want you want to feel like that somebody's actually is in invested enough energetically to want to see you to know you to be close to you not just get to know you so they can put you and take you to bed sort of thing you know it's a different level and that's why flirting has a powerful place in the dating scene simply put yeah because i want to get to know the person about them their variety of layers and the way that they think about a variety of things and i find it very fun and flirty to have conversations with like that with people and I really admire when they will make the effort to do it back with me. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not as much fun if they don't want to play. I like playing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so another way to flirt is to, and I've done this a couple of times. It's so funny because it feels very junior high school mm -hmm. is to if you're with somebody to, to go say, I used to do this with girlfriends all the time. I haven't had the opportunity as much to go over and go, my friend's really interested in you. <laughs> <'Cause it was laughs> the, the guys are so like, really? And it's the truth. It's not me. They go, right. really? And I go, yeah. And she's feeling kind of shy and she just, and they're like, we're good. And, and I go, would you go over and say hello to her? And they would just do it. I mean, it Absolutely. was such a fun thing to do. I, I, what I love about that is something that definitely feels like being a teenager again, in a sense. But it's, it's like, not bad. But, but also, it's not something that, you know, you necessarily have to get over because you're now 35, 40, 50, whatever that is. It's kind of, if you're out with your friends and there's somebody, and you're talking, I mean, it happens all the time. You know, you're standing here and women, especially under this, men not as much, but women definitely do talk to their girlfriends about, oh, that guy is cute and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, to be the bold one to go on your friend's behalf to talk to the guy it can be so much fun as well. And for the guy who gets told, like, by the way, my friend, that one over there is interested in you, it's almost like he can, in some ways, he's off the hook because he doesn't have to stress over it. He can simply say, oh, that's so great. Or, you know, I appreciate it, but I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And I had and that, that happen only a couple times, but it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's clean in the sense that there's no fear of rejection going on. Because it's person, not me and it's I, not him. Being the yeah. liaison, being that intermediary, is almost you take the pressure off both people, which is such a gift to give somebody if you do that for them. So yeah, do that. And one of my friends actually did that, and she married him. So there you go. There you go. You should have got a finder's fee for that one, huh? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love how you point that out because it's it's hard, you know. Even though we're grown ups, to go talk to somebody new or or have somebody new come talk to you, so. You know, if you have a wing person that can go be your intermediary, because that's how it used to be. People used to do in introductions in the old days. And I think there was really something to it to do mm -hmm. it now. And 
it really was very lighthearted. Everybody seemed to feel lighthearted about it. You know, yeah. the person that's really liking him fell off the hook. And as you said, the two people talking were like, you know, we have nothing invested in this. What do you think? And and it was wonderful. The first time I the guy said, because mm, as I was surprised he wouldn't even go over and talk to her, but okay. She was so much less let down. Yeah. Because he didn't do it directly. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, I think this is an even better benefit. Yeah. So put it out there and maybe people will try it and let us know if it worked because it really did was a fun thing to do. Yeah. And I, well, I think, I think what I wanted to say to anybody listening or watching this is we're giving you a whole bunch of things to talk about. We want to finish here, but just saying to ahead of time, so like we're giving you a bunch of ideas to play with. Mm -hmm. We want your feedback. <laughs> Have oh, you done these? Yeah. Are you willing to try these out? If you are doing, do these and let us know how they go because we know they work, but it's almost like, have you have you as a listener or as a viewer tried it yourself i know so the people if you've been watching and listening to this yeah because i mean really i should have counted them up i'm sure we've given at least 20 things and just to try one try mm -hmm. one see if it's your type of thing see if it works for you try it a couple times and see if it gets easier and if it doesn't then try another thing try them until one of them feels less hard and then that's the one to stick with the one that feels a little more you. And again, as I said, you know, if if you mess up, that's the fun part. It's not like, oh, good, I've done, I'm bad. I'm going to hide that in shame. It's like, no, be honest. It's like, you know what, what's sent to me was this and this didn't work, so what happened. And the other person, hopefully, for somebody you want to be with, will be absolutely on board with the fact that you owned it and you they'll they'll soften the blow. They'll be kinder to you and they'll, they'll probably help make fun with you, not at yeah. you, but fun with you so that you can enjoy yourself. And then it becomes easier because, in fact, Humor and, and silliness can be flirtatious methods as well. So I was thinking of a couple of things that we've suggested before, and certainly in the flirting realm, it would make it so much easier if you take a dance class. That's a group class, because what they do is they pair up men and women and then you change partners and you change partners. So you get to dance with every single person there including the teacher, which is super fun, because then you feel like you know what you're doing instead of <laughs> you're going to step on everybody's feet. Right. And practice, you know, saying, oh, my gosh, this is so weird. And how are you doing with this? I mean, that's a really flirty thing to do. And then what happens after generally is then it's open dancing. And then you just sidle over, you know, gosh, it was fun dancing with you. I'd love to dance with you again. I mean, they might say no. They might say yes, and it's all practice. The other option is a cooking class because generally mm -hmm. they pair you up. And I've talked to those teachers, and they often, if there's you know at least some men, they will pair, they don't pair men together. They pair men with women. So <laughs> now right. you have this task that you're doing together, and you're learning this thing together, and you're standing right next to each other, and it's a perfect atmosphere to practice flirting. Even if you don't, they're not your person, you're doing this thing together. And if they're your person, then how much more fun it is to flirt with them. But everybody gets better at something when you practice. And these atmospheres, it's almost, how could you not flirt if you're dancing with somebody or cooking with somebody? I mean, it's just, it would feel like an easier way to ease into it. And it doesn't seem like, what am I supposed to do when I am not remember? You're already there next to them this way or this way. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the perfect opportunity. So I, I hope somebody, I hope people will try a bunch of these things and let us know. And you can tell us what, what didn't work. We're always happy to hear that. Really, it's fine because it doesn't everything doesn't work for everybody. I mean, you and I suggest things to our clients and they come back and they go, no, I need a different thing. I mean, this part worked, but this didn't. It didn't fit my personality. I didn't know that till I did it, but now I know. So let's right. do something different. Okay, so that's why we're giving you this smorgasbord of things to go try them. And who knows the new skills you've learned, period, as well as the skill of flirting, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and dancing, frankly, is one of those overlooked things, especially because we've been, we don't have the same with dance hall methods you have in the old days, but still learning sort of couples dances, whether it is swing or salsa or, or tango or something else. First of all, it gives you more confidence when you do go out somewhere where there's dancing. Second, though, 
it means that if the other person asks you out to dance and you can play at the level they're playing at, even greater. But also, if you go out and you meet somebody who can't dance and you can be the lead or be the guide, if you're a man, absolutely rocks. So the dancing stuff is great. The kitchen stuff, and that's the thing, the, the cookery class is funny because a, a, a cooking class venue showed, uh, set up shop not far from me um, about a year ago. And so it's been on my mind about checking one of those out at some point. So thank you for the reminder because that's another place to go play. Absolutely. And something I might be myself. It's so fun. It's so fun. I've done it. I've suggested it to people and everybody that did it. Nobody that did it had a bad time. They didn't right. always meet somebody to date. They had a fun time. Everybody said they had a fun time because mm -hmm. it's not just the two of you. It's a whole group and you're all learning the same thing together. And there might be somebody across the way that looks more interesting than the person you're with. And Often they, you sit around and eat the food that you just made together, which is kind of fun. And then yeah. sometimes they'll go out for coffee afterwards and you can go sit next to the person <laughs> that looks more interesting. I mean, it's really got so much opportunity. Absolutely. And, for, and, the, sorry after you. and you learn to cook. <laughs> well, I was going to say the same thing is that basically is that that's now a skill you get to take home. So when you do meet somebody, you get to take them, take them over to your house and cook for them. They get blown away by the skills you've gained. It's like there's a double whammy here. You get parts to meet somebody and you get some skills you can take home with you. <laughs> we are all about well-rounded people, aren't we, Barry? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Just making sure everybody's got a good repertoire behind them. Because women generally like to dance. Even if we aren't great at it, we just do. It's a thing for women more generally importance than men. And lots of men say they have two left feet. But if you can just learn a couple of basic, like the box step or just a couple, and then just do the same thing over and over and over again, but you learn how to do this thing and feel confident doing this thing and right. confident making these couple of dishes, it will help because then we feel like you can take the lead. If you can take the lead in dancing or preparing a meal for us that we don't feel like we have to do it all the time. It'll go a long ways to wooiness. It really will. There's some yeah. lots of ulterior motives that we're happy to discuss with both of these <laughs> things to go do. Absolutely. Now it's funny because I, I have a slight bias because I have a um, uh, a cumulative um, list of, res of, of recipes that I keep picking up from places, and plus I watch a lot of YouTube videos on on cooking to get out and practice outside of my own kitchen is a good thing to do. So you've really got my, my, my mind's been spinning on this too. So even if you're, if you even for those watching, I'm getting stuff out of this. <laughs> well, and the other part too, is that you have a professional that's going to show you the easiest way to do things, the most effective yeah. way to do things, some shortcuts. I mean, I've, there's restaurants that do cooking classes in mm -hmm. their kitchens on their off days. As you said, there's cooking schools. They've really come open more since COVID because everything was so shut down. Right. And the thing that's fun is that it gets them exposure. So why wouldn't they do that? That you would now come back to this restaurant to eat because now you met the chef. You're on a first name basis with the chef. Hi, I took a glass from you. You know, how yeah. fun is that? And yeah. then it's the cheers. They know your name when you come in. And then when you know a couple of things, it's amazing how other things can just fall into place. And I'll tell you, I've said it out loud. One of my favorite things is to cook with somebody. I'm, I'm like, I'm fine cooking. I make myself food all the time, but I really love cooking with a person. Yeah. You know, when we feed each other and we test and we, when something's cooking, we dance in the kitchen. Oh, it just makes my heart happy. So I'm a big believer on cooking classes. Same here. I mean, I, I, I've gotten really good at cooking because it was something I got to do during the pandemic because we're going out to eat. So I did a lot more home cooking stuff. And then, yeah, I've got default recipes, but having something, having a, a, a project together with somebody where we can build a meal we can enjoy together is such a great thing to do. That's another mm -hmm. place to flirt as well. I, oh, very flirty cooking together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you try this sauce. <laughs> yes. and, and are you just going to wear an apron? Okay. <laughs> That's another level. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation, huh? Yes. <laughs> Good chance to pause. <laughs> yeah. So if you are have no idea how to flirt, or you've tried it and it didn't work, or you'd like to know more techniques of flirting and you haven't gotten enough from our wonderful podcast today, then you could talk to Barry or I. We'd be happy to talk more about flirting because as frustrating as it is that we can never fit everything into one episode and we have so many other things we could teach you about flirting. Indeed. 
So if you'd like to reach me, the best way is to go to my website, which is www.theperfectcatch.com and click on what's holding you back from love. It will give you a brief questionnaire to fill out and then it'll give you access to my online calendar and you can make a complimentary conversation appointment with me at your convenience. You can also go to the bottom of my website and click on all my social media little icons. They're so cute of Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest and Twitter and YouTube and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> And then you can also send me a personal email at christine at theperfectcatch.com. And please tell people how they can reach you, Mr. Selby. Certainly. So if you want to reach out for me for flooding help or any else of help, frankly, about relationships and love and, and being being whole again after breakups and everything else, go to my website, which is barryselby.com. Um, on my homepage, I have a couple of things you can click on. The top one of, one of the, the top of the page is a link to get a discovery session with me. Get on my calendar and we can have a chat and see where you are, where you want to go, and if I can help you, and if you want to work with me, that's a gift I give to you. At the bottom of the home of the home page, there is a link to my email list where you'll get replays of this every week, <laughs> plus other offering and other emails I send out. Um, you can send me an email directly at barry at barryselby.com. Um, also, my quiz is on my site, which is the relationship readiness assessment, which I've built over the last few months. It came went live about two months ago. Um, I've got people taking it right now, which is wonderful to get and see where they are. So if you go to barryselby.com forward slash quiz, you can check for yourself. It does have a Wizard of Oz theme, so you have to go and check it out and see what it's all about. Um, and also on social media, you can so you can go to my handles on all the platforms except for Instagram and threads, which are the real Barry Selby. Everywhere else is Barry Selby. So youtube.com slash Barry Selby, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, Twitter slash X. Um, YouTube. YouTube, thank you. Of course, okay. YouTube. <laughs> you see, yeah, thank you. Getting it back. A bazillion on YouTube. About, yeah, over a thousand, definitely, videos on YouTube. So you can check out my yeah, resources sure. there. So lots of free gifts, free services there. And again, Instagram and Threads, because they're the same platform, um, have, as the real Barry Selby is the only one that's changed. So follow me on social media, check out my stuff. And of course, our podcast is on all the audio platforms. So Google, um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you can get the audio version if you want to go take us with you and out shopping or go to the gym. And you can watch us live here on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. I mean, excuse me, Facebook and YouTube. And every week we're here live. Yeah. So you can watch us live too, as well as in repeat. And we're at one o'clock Pacific and four o'clock Eastern and all the times in between. And we'd love for you to like and share and subscribe. And if you have friends that are feeling frustrated in their dating life or their relationships, where maybe they've lost some of that flirtiness, share this with them, send this YouTube video to them so that they could get up to speed feeling like they know how to flirt again and feel all juiced up. Absolutely. And we do invite your comments and questions. If you have feedback, mm -hmm. if you have thoughts on what we said, if you have questions, reach out to us. We're definitely here to help you. And if you have subjects you'd like us to cover, we'd be so happy to hear about that as well. Indeed. So, so we'll be back next week. Take care. Bye for now.